to spare all ye realms. The leech world has come. The sad days of this world are nearing their sum. <laughs> the mad doctor and one of the greatest threats to the Empire in its entire history. For only this Frankenstein of chaos could decide to take on the entire might of our armies with any hope of victory. Festus has decided that he will sacrifice the entire empire to Nurgle, and we should bend the knee to the Grandfather. I think not. The men of the empire will not kneel before the Plague Father, not without a fight. Yet I fear that we shall prove to be nothing more than speed bumps to this madman. In the end, chaos is too strong, too mighty. It's only the fractious nature of their leaders that they have failed to achieve anything of note thus far. But should he decide to seek allies in the north, then Festus will shatter the world. Welcome everyone, Questine here with my campaign overview guide for Festus the Leech Lord, the champion of chaos of Nurgle. The good Frankenstein doctor. He is quite powerful in campaign and in battle. Let's take a look at his campaign benefits, his skill line, his starting position, as well as what he has to work with. He doesn't really have anything uh, in particular, except that vassals gain poison attacks and spread Nurgle corruption, and you also get 25 souls when plague is spread. That's not really going to be a lot of souls. He does uh, have the ability to brew plagues, so he does have the Nurgle mechanic to brew plagues. Now, plagues can offer you various benefits in battle and on the campaign map. So you can get plagues that give you casualty replenishment, a significant amount of it. Uh, you can get plagues that give you 100% income from sacking and looting settlements in a local province. Uh, you then have another uh, plague that gives you growth, which means that you can grow your settlements very, very quickly. So Festus is a legendary, war, uh, legendary lord of chaos that is capable of expanding far faster than anyone else. And since the change with the Warriors of Chaos where you can vassalize human factions, he has actually become uh, quite a bit more powerful because he can vassalize Hawkland, Midland, um, Osland. But the problem, of course, in his particular campaign is that the Warriors of Chaos do rely on Dark Fortress sites. You do have a pretty powerful one. You start with one in the brass uh, keep so you can uh, that's already tier two and that is actually a substantial amount of power from the very beginning of your campaign because that allows you to have a solid economic base and a solid recruitment base from the very start of your campaign because generally speaking if you're playing warriors of chaos you have to conquer your initial dark uh, dark fortress festus gets one from the very onset of his campaign and because of that he is quite very powerful he certainly has a lot of power in the early game and he has proven consistently that he has a lot of durability although he generally ends up losing to the might of the empire just throwing everything against him if um if he's played by the AI and the empire is played by the AI or the player uh, Festus does have a great deal of durability in his campaign. Like the Brass Keep, starting at tier 2, has a pretty powerful garrison. It's not so easy to uh, to tackle. If you're, you're playing a Carl Franz campaign, it is actually quite difficult to do so. The issue, however, of course, is that you only have another Dark Fortress site over here in the Empire if I toggle the Fog of War with a the mod there. Outside of that, there are no other Dark Fortress sites over here in the Imperial Lands. Uh, Skill-wise, when we're thinking about Festus, before I continue about Dark Fortress, when we're looking at Festus, he does get casualties post battle, so more money, uh, battle healing cap, wins of magic, casualty replenishment, diplomatic relations benefits, a, kind, a bunch of uh, different benefits. Nothing too uh, too uh, significant, though I would argue having a bit of casualty replenishment, having uh, casualties post battle does count for a bit. Now, when, we, when we're talking about Gifts of Chaos, Nurgle is okay. Nurgle is okay because he does give you uh, replenishment in foreign territory as well as growth per region plus 75 after winning a battle in all provinces. You can get a lot of growth if you're playing as Nurgle, and that's before the plague. So if you're playing a Nurgle 
legendary lore. Like, I would say Nurgle is the best besides Undivided. Like, Undivided, generally speaking, is the best. It has uh, some of the better units available there. But uh, Nurgle is also a really, really good choice because Nurgle has uh, the best uh, chosen with uh, with great weapons. Like, they're the best chosen in combat. Although Nurgle Cavalry can leave a lot to be desired, they can always, of course, use Undivided uh, Cavalry, Undivided Chaos Knights. I mean, the difference, of course, is going to be one of speed, primarily, really, when we're thinking about it. Uh, so Nurgle units tend to be slower, but they have more durability. That works very well for infantry, doesn't work so well for cavalry, but you can always use undivided uh, units when it comes down to it. You also start with the Chaos Giant, though I'm not too fond of Chaos Giants. You do start with two Warriors of Nurgle, um, one Chaos Warrior, or rather, yeah, two Chaos Warriors of Nurgle and one regular Chaos Warriors uh, unit that you can easily transform into a Nurgle Chaos Warrior with a Grey Weapon. Now, when it comes to Festus's campaign plan, you could stay in the Empire and just duke it out with Karl Franz and all that, and uh, gaining vassals, using the vassals to fight your battles for you. As Chaos, you do have access to a lot of territorial types, so you do have that kind of flexibility in your campaign. But of course, the limitation because of Dark Fortress can Dark Fortresses can be a bit annoying. So if you're playing as Festus, your best campaign plan would actually be to head over to Norska and start capturing Dark Fortress sites there, because there's a lot of them over there in Norska, and you can you know vassalize Zazel, uh, and you can put all the Norskan factions under your thumb, so to speak gain control of, uh, over all of their Dark Fortress sites, or a majority of them, like we're looking at four here directly to the north, uh, then two, uh, two others, three others over here, uh, one that Azazel will get, so three others over here, and then Prague, so that would be a total of eight. And that's before you consider that you can go into the Northern Castway, deal with Sigvald, deal with Mal Malice Darkblade, and then get even more Dark Fortress sites. That could be one campaign plan that you adopt, or you could decide to just, you know, fight an empire, rely on vassals, rely on the economy based on looting and sacking settlements and gaining uh, control over the empire with that. Now, your campaign victory conditions require you to take Middenheim, Prague, and Kislev. So you're going to want to at least get this Dark Fortress site. Your long campaign victory conditions, well, <laughs> there's a lot of... Um, there's a lot of choices over here, but mainly what they uh, what they're basically based on is the idea of getting the northern chaos wastes, more or less. So while you can certainly fight an empire, your campaign victory conditions do require you to go over those dark fortress sites, and your long campaign victory condition is actually pretty substantial. Short campaign victory condition, not necessarily as much, but long campaign victory condition, absolutely so. Lord's Recruit rank plus 10 is pretty damn powerful. Now, with Festus, I would say he's he's a caster, but he's not really going to be a powerful fighter himself, and his magic is okay, but it's more support magic than anything else, I would argue, when it comes to Nurgle magic. It's decent, it gets the job done, but it's about regeneration and combat, which can be useful with a heavy infantry army that the Warriors of Chaos absolutely use. So he is a powerhouse, you just have the issue of his starting position starting here over here in the Brass Keep and having to make your way uh, to the north in order to get those Dark Fortress sites and the power that they will give them in your campaign. Of course, you can get a lot of vassals along the way, like the Greenskins, Midland, Hockland, Talibayam, Karl Franz himself, and make an incredibly powerful empire through that. I mean, you only have one Dark Fortress site in the empire itself beyond the Brass Keep and Middenheim, that's known itself, which is a bit of a weird choice when I actually think about it, because I don't believe known was ever uh, dark, uh, was ever the location of, uh, Cast Fortress. But maybe it has to do with the importance that Nuln has an Imperial history, what do I know about it? But yeah, Festus, like all the other legendary lords of Chaos, the Warriors of Chaos, is a pretty powerful legendary lord. Camp his campaign can be a lot of fun, you can grow, you can get a lot of income from settlements with the plagues. And really, talking about the plagues, like, let's talk about this one, because having double income from sacking and looting settlements 
is pretty substantial, but you need to get the gut rut and you need to get weeping eye. So if we're looking at this, uh, if we're looking at this, when we're when we're thinking about, so the gut rut is way over here. So you need to unlock all of these plagues, and the weeping eyes. Where would that be? Let's just see over here. Um, quite a lot of plagues, really. Yeah, so you have one that's easy to get access to, and then you have one that will require you to get this entire tree, which doesn't necessarily feel that great of a tree. I mean, it's great to reduce the ammunition during a siege defense battle, especially if you're going after factions that have a lot of range units in their settlements, but you're mainly really doing that to unlock uh, this particular plague for income from sacking settlements. And there's a lot of power to be gained from the plagues that you do have. Anyway... That's all there is to know what this particular campaign is. A pretty good campaign. It's an interesting campaign. Uh, it does provide you a lot of opportunities, but I would also say it's probably the most challenging of the Warriors of Chaos campaigns because you do start neck deep in enemy territory. So you do have a lot of fights on your hand, whereas other Warriors of Chaos campaigns can feel like a steamroll very easily, and when you do encounter a challenge, by that point, you're mega powerful, whereas Festus will encounter a challenge from the very first turn of his campaign. 